Everybody, it's Tyler here at IRI, checking team number 4607 CIS Division Champions on Johnson. A phenomenal year this year they had so far. CIS is really a complete package. Uh, I've known them from a long time from Minnesota, but they're really a team that's starting to take uh, the entire FRC world by storm. Uh, looking through the entire robot, I just love the overall packaging, the packaging this has to bring. But you're going to hear a lot about 3D printing, uh, a lot of cool electrical stuff. You really got to take a look at that drop down panel they're going to be showcasing. And of course, we're going through all the features and functionality of this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Michael, let's start off on your robot. Talk about your electrical system. Walk me through uh, how it's wired up and uh, what advantages you've seen out of your uh, process you've gone through. Uh, yeah, so... This year, our team went with more of an approach that we weren't used to. Traditionally, we always put our, our electrical panel on the back. And one big thing we were concerned about is our robo reel, because you've got to have access to that. And we wanted to keep it central, so naturally, we placed it in the center of our robot. You can see it's got our pigeon and everything. And it's actually on a hinge system for easy access. And you just screw a bolt up there, and that's all there is to that. And we also wanted in our PDP in a more central spot as well, where we could use utilize these channels to run all of our wires on, and where we can see the labels that we have on them, and just run them right into there. And a big advantage I see to this is it gives you a lot more real estate because you don't have a big back to your robot. Because I mean, if if we would have put a electrical panel like say more where it had to be on the back of our robot I don't think we could have done our tilted elevator like we did and you can also see we have the we use the inline wagos which I love um, one of our mentors introduced them to us this year they're lifesaver and they come with carriers that you can just rivet right into your frame and then we also custom made some spark max holders for our swerve drive which honestly super nice just because it keeps everything right where you need it well obviously uh working out great for you i love by the way that that drop down hinge i think is really slick on there that's really cool is that something uh you guys would ever make like a white paper for if people were interested in seeing or anything like that uh i would say possibly because i mean i could definitely see us using this like every year if we continue to keep doing panels underneath our robot. Yeah, and I think other teams would really benefit from it too, so that's, that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely even inspectors at regionals have been like, man, that's actually really cool. And yeah, Let's talk about uh, some 3D printing on your robot. Isaac's going to be covering uh, more about that. So uh, talk to me about uh, what you've done for 3D printing. I know you got this giant drum as well too, so I'd love to hear more about it. Yep. For 3D printing, we wanted to utilize it a lot more this year to keep the end out there because it's going to be hanging way out over the nose. We wanted to keep it as light as possible. So we actually print carbon fiber nylon. So for our intake over there, you can see that the gears are actually helical gears, which have multiple benefits. The V pattern keeps them in line with each other, and it also allows no backlash and more power transmission through them so they can survive more. Those gears have been on there the whole season. We have not had to replace them at all. And they're printed out of carbon fiber nylon. Another piece we also have is this magnet mount here, which for our starting configuration, it goes under the arm over there, right there, and then attaches these two magnets together to hold the jaw in place to keep us inside frame perimeter. And then our arm will move, detaching them once, that, once we're auto starts. And then here, one of the biggest things we had this year was these drums. And in 2019, we had an issue with our drums binding, causing the elevator to go up crooked. So this year we wanted to solve that. So the way we do this is we actually mount our drums on a lead screw. So when the elevator moves up and down, the drums actually move side to side on the lead screw. If we want to show that here, you can look at the drums back here. And the goal is to keep this line perfectly straight so it does not bind up on itself. The drums will actually move side to side when we go up and down. So we have a pull down line and a pull up line. The pull down line is over here and the pull up line 
is over there, so the drums will actually move side to side, as you can see. I love the thought process that's gone yep. into that. That's really cool to, to show up and see, and obviously it's uh, a very slick uh, operation you've had as well, too. Yep. Uh, when you're looking at, you know, at doing so much 3D printing, obviously we've seen teams start to do that more and more and more for things, but uh, what advice do you have or what have you learned uh, that other teams might be able to benefit from uh, for, um, from your 3D printing? I'd say just try new things and don't be afraid to see if it fails or not because we thought, we didn't think those gears or much of this would last very long, but it's actually proven to be way more uh, durable than we thought it would initially be. Now we're going to plan to use it a lot more in the future. And then going along with these drums for the rigging, a huge thing was keeping all of our rigging straight. So as you can see right here, the pull-up line comes up through here and it's all ran in the tube and we actually offset the pulley so that it is the line is perfectly straight down the middle here, which allows more predictability in programming so that fleet angle isn't changing, changing the way it goes up. John and Colin, let's talk about some of the uh, scoring aspects of your robot, your intake and your arm, and that sort of thing, and we'll see some uh, demonstrations of it working too. Talk to me more about what's gone into it. Yeah, so here, we'll get out of the way so we can actually operate the robot. Um, so this year we went with a uh, fixed tilted elevator um, it's a three-stage elevator. We call our third stage kind of our carriage stage because that holds the uh, uh, all the arm elements in place and then allows that kind of flexibility to um, score. So, uh, Colin, you want to talk a little bit about the elevator? Yeah, so on the elevator, we actually have, or at the beginning of the season, we started off with these, pull, or these uh, sailing pulleys, and they were... They kind of blew apart at our first regional, and they tend to look a little bit like this, where all the balls and everything fell out. And then, so after that, after our first regional, into our second regional, we changed to these custom-made uh, butterfly pulleys. And so it's two high-speed bearings, and so it's in a butterfly, so the rope doesn't really have a chance to escape. It's always gets centered down to the middle, so there's zero chance of it hopping off the line. And also on our uh, elevator, we had some binding problems with this stage not going up first. So we added these surgical tubing to it so it helped pull the stage up. Can we see uh, some of the robot moving a little bit and kind of talk about what's happening as it's going? Yeah, so um, with our starting configuration, um, kind of just in the resting position, off position, our robot actually extends uh, our frame perimeter. So. Um, when we're in uh, starting configuration, kind of like Isaac talked about with that 3D printing, um, when it's on, it kind of it holds it up like this, and then um, all of the uh, buttons for the driver are presets. Um, so we have shelf pickup, and then we also have uh, then we also have the ground pickup for the cones and cubes. And this allows uh, a lot of flexibility, kind of just with. Uh, our partners or you know if we're kind of working by ourselves um, it allows a lot of flexibility um, a lot of just different um, strategies um, just kind of makes us a really fluent player in the field and it allows us to score uh, pretty quickly as well um, and then kind of talking about the uh, arm itself and the manipulator um, on our arm uh, we have a 90 degree gearbox and that is a 75 to 1 gear reduction um, and so we have a shaft that connects our, uh, the gearbox to our carriage stage, uh, what we call. And then um, that uh, full-size Neo just directly drives that shaft and allows us to uh, move up and down. Um, and then we have a virtual, what we call a virtual four bar, which is this chain right here. Um, and that keeps the angle of our arm or our manipulator um, the exact same, whether we're you know doing shelf pickup or we're on the ground uh, picking up cones or cubes. Well, as we uh, wrap up this robot, one thing I'll ask you guys, uh, you know, CIS is in Minnesota has been known as one of the better teams out there, but I think you're starting to take that next leap, uh, of course, with your division one as well, too. What have you learned most from this year that you're going to apply in the future uh, to keep your team successful? Honestly, it comes down for us, it comes down to a lot of just repeatability and training. Um, for the repeatability side, we run uh, a program called FMEA. I know, Colin, you can talk a lot more about that. Yeah, so our FMEA program, we actually, after every match, go through a what's called a pit checklist. So we go over, check over each subsystem, make sure everything's working fine. And after that, we do a uh, system check. So we go over, check each uh, angle. We check the angle on the manipulator. 
and the height of the arm to make sure all of our uh, presets are uh, where they're supposed to be. Well, CIS, uh, fantastic uh, season this year, so congratulations on all your success for that. Of course, we wish you best of luck here at IRI, but can't wait to see what you bring in future years as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. Head on over to SolidWorks.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.